Hello everyone, Sarah here. Uh, today's video might rub some people the wrong way and that's okay. Know that as you listen, it is it is with full, full compassion and content in taking you through this journey to truly, truly, truly healing the inner emotional wounds, removing the inner energetic, emotional, spiritual, sometimes physical blocks that you feel within your body after having lived through an emotionally unavailable, abusive, and neglectful past. That being my area of expertise, I see a lot as I share a lot, and a lot of people connect comment and engage with this because a lot of people have been through that too, whether it was from an upbringing, whether it's from a relationship, regardless of where those wounds came from and what the cause of them was, it leaves all of us feeling the same. It leaves all of us feeling broken, damaged, not good enough, unworthy, of good things, undeserving of good things. It leaves a lot of us stuck in this ability to receive good, powerful, positive things in our lives. It leaves a lot of us in a state of naturally rejecting that. When someone wants to come in and help you and love you and support you and do something kind for you, there's a part of you from that wounded place that says, mm, I don't know, what, what's your motive? What's your objective? What do you want from me? What am I gonna owe you? What if I can't repay you? And I don't like feeling that way. So it's this feeling of rejection and separation and I don't want that. So this, this feeling of repelling that which you deserve, desire and want to receive. We're all hardwired and programmed to receive love, want love, desire love, and through that connection. And a lot of us, when we've gone through that stage and that state of emotionally unavailable, abusive, and neglectful past, even the receiving, not receiving what we wanted to receive. And we move out of that stage. We move out of that relationship. We get out of it. We break up. We go away. We move away. We go no contact. We cut them off energetically, right? And, and then we, we dive into <gasps> processing the guilt, the shame, the pain, and then we wear this label. It's as if we unknowingly were wearing a label while we were in that state, whether it's through childhood or in that relationship of the victim. Things happen to me. And we don't even know that that's this label that we're wearing that says, hello, my name is victim. I believe that things happen to me. And I believe that the things happen to me are bad things or hurtful things or painful things. And as those things happen, they penetrate the belief that we have about ourselves, the beliefs that are held within our unconscious mind. Consciously, we may hear the thoughts that we have and go, oh, and as we, we begin this journey, right, to healing, we, we understand and we can identify, well, that's just a thought and a thought is not a fact, right? It's, it's, just, a, it's just a thought. And, and then we dive into meditation because that's what people say to do. And they say, just imagine the thought floating on a fluffy little white cloud and watching it float away. And you're thinking, nope. Still there, still there. And it's not just a flight, fluffy, fluffy white, a fluffy, a fluffy white cloud. It feels like this heavy, dark, thick, powerful storm. Not just a cloud, it's just storm and it and it's damaging. It feels like a hurricane, like a tsunami. And and I get there's no amount of meditation that can change that tsunami inside my mind to this little white fluffy cloud that just floats away with those negative thoughts about myself and my life and the things that have happened to me on it. So therefore meditation doesn't work. Okay, read a book about, about how to heal your life. Well, that's great for them. Tried the things in the book. I did the exercises, it didn't work. And so many of us don't realize we're still walking around with this victim badge, but we've gotten out of that relationship. We've gotten away from the person that caused all the pain and all the trauma, all the heartache and all the heartbreak. We've gotten away. So now we unknowingly use words and language like I'm a survivor. And there's even music that supports this. And, and it's supposed to make that feel really, really good. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. And, and we post that proudly in comments and, and I'm a survivor. The thing is, here's victim. Here's survivor. They're neighbors. They're still so close in proximity to each other. You got out of the victim house and you moved into the survivor house and that survivor house is right next door. 
emotionally, energetically. The unconscious beliefs that your mind still has about itself is I'm out. I survived that relationship. I didn't die. Did I make it out barely? Yeah. Do I still feel broken and shattered? Yeah. Am I still working to put the pieces of myself and my life back together emotionally, mentally, spiritually, energetically, even financially? Yeah. But I survived. Look, I'm not in that relationship anymore. I've moved on. Now I'm bettering my life. I've got a different job. I've got a different relationship. I'm doing better. But you're just outside of that victim mindset, that victim state, that relationship in which you were treated horribly, in which you were a victim to. But here's the problem. You're just outside of that. And being just outside of it, it's so easy to be pulled back to it because the inner unconscious beliefs that your mind still has are that of the mindset that you had when you were that victim, when you were in that state. So is it a bad thing to declare I'm a survivor? No, it took an incredible amount of strength and courage and bravery. Those things that, that you didn't even know that you had, those things that actually fear produced. You were so afraid of what it would look like if you continued and if you stayed and if you were treated that way for even longer that you, that you said no. And you did something powerful and positive for yourself and you got out and now you're out and you're over here and you're like, I'm a survivor. <gasps> I survived that. But that's not where you need to stop. If you stop there, it's, it's too easy to kind of let time heal all things. And the more time that goes on that you stay in the survivor state, you kind of forgot the pain. You forgot about how bad it was. There is no amount of imagining that can actually take you back to that moment. For example, I had my daughter naturally. No medication, not a single IV hooked to, up to me. She came out naturally. Was it excruciatingly painful? Absolutely. I had predomal labor, so I was actually in labor for three days. It was the most intense and excruciating physical pain, not emotional. Let's talk about that in another video. Physical pain I ever felt. But if you said, Sarah, go back to that. That was years and years and years ago. Do I know that it hurt? Yes. There's no amount of visualization or meditation that could take me back to physically experiencing that same kind of pain. So it's as if my mind forgot, can't remember, can't recall, can't go back to it. Not at the level and intensity that it was. And that's what time does, right? And that's why people use the phrase time heals all things. Because you can't go back to that exact experience for many reasons. And so now when I think about it, yes, I remember that it was really, really painful, but I can't recreate it. I can recall what it felt like and the sounds that my, my body made and the movements that it made and how painful it was, but I can't re-experience it. So now it's like, you know what? I survived it. It wasn't that bad because I survived it. And here I am and here she is and I've got this beautiful daughter now, but it's like it wasn't as bad because I survived it. And this comes into play when, when we're in that mindset of when we get out of something that is so painful and so physical, we enter into this survivor state. But when you're talking about emotional abuse and neglect, it's more than just a physical pain. And a lot of times there wasn't a physical pain involved, but there was a deeply rooted mental, emotional, energetic, spiritual pain. And when you get out, yes, technically you survived it. You're out of it. You're no longer in it. But it's so easy to forget because you're so close to it still in proximity that you find yourselves in situations where, oh man, again, another narcissistic relationship, another horrible relationship, 
more pain, more disbelief again. Why does this always happen to me? You find yourself in situations where you're going back to that, not in the same form, just like I couldn't rebirth my daughter, but it's like, again, what's going on? So when you're in that survivor state, it's much better than being in the victim state, but you're still so close because you're just barely out. It's like a neighbor. The next level, the next evolution is to continue to go that direction out, out. And the only way out is through. And that is through the unconscious mind, through rewiring, through reprogramming the inner and unconscious beliefs you had about yourself that were developed from that victim stage and state. To get further away from it, to create more space, more distance between it. So you can look back and see it for what it was. Because in the survivor state, you're still in the, the, I can see a couple trees now. You're in the victim state. I can't see the forest. Look, here's a tree. Move into the survivor state. Oh, there's a couple trees. You move into the thriver state where everything about the inner unconscious beliefs, like the core and the depths of the beliefs that you have about who you are because of what you experienced and went through are completely transformed. There's so much more space between them now. You're not so close that, oh, one little bump in the road and oh, I go back to that. And oh, well, that's, oopsie. <laughs> no, a complete transformation, emotional freedom is creating more space between you and that. And that is using the spaces between your ears. That is using your mind. The beliefs that your mind has about itself, the deeply rooted core beliefs, the ones where you believe I'm not enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving, I'm powerless, I'm helpless, I'm hopeless, this always happens to me, there's nothing I can do about it, it is what it is. And that deep, powerful transformation is what creates that separation between the victim state, the thriver state, not just the survivor where you're still so close and, oh, you know, I'm, I'm out. I survived by the skin of my teeth. And I don't even know why that's a phrase in a saying, because you know, it's not true. You don't have skin on your teeth. You've got bone, you've got enamel. So it doesn't even make sense. And it's almost like it doesn't make sense of why you would just stop there. Why stop there? You realize when you're, you're clearing and declaring and claiming, and you're wearing that I'm a survivor label, you're still so close to the victim, the old victim you. You did the hard work to get out. Why stop there? Why not continue on and become that thriver you where exponentially everything in your life is better, is changed, is transformed. The way you treat yourself, the way you treat others, because you can get out of a really toxic relationship, out of a poor and horrible family dynamic and you can change this paradigm for yourself and your children in your life. But when you still have those inner unconscious beliefs about yourself, it's as if you're still in it in a way, one foot in, one foot out. But I survived, look. Taking that next step is doing the inner work to transform the core beliefs you have about yourself, the deeply rooted beliefs you have about yourself. It changes the lens in which you see your life through. That you truly not just say because it's a, a good affirmation, life happens to me, not for me. Oh wait, no, that's the victim state. Life happens for me, not to me. Sometimes, I guess it just depends on what's happening. I'm a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to work harder. And it feels like everything in life is hard work when you're in that survivor state. Because it's still so close to the victim state. True inner powerful transformation is continuing that direction along that journey. And using the power of your unconscious mind the thoughts that it has about who you are, 
because of what you've been through and what's been done to you and completely transforming them, not just putting another sticker or label on it. And it's like, oh, what's this? I peel off that survivor sticker. Oh, what's under there? Victim? No, 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 don't, don't, don't look under there. There's nothing to see under there. Put that back, please. Uh, who said you could touch that? Who let you in here? Go away, get out. It's about truly removing everything from this victim state. And that is within, that is within the unconscious beliefs that you have about yourself at your core and at your root. So you're not just putting another label on top of it and masking it and saying, oh, I hope, I hope everyone reads, hello, I'm a survivor, not a victim anymore. Cause see, I got out. Look, 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 we broke up. We're not together anymore. I've moved on. It's about removing not just replacing that sticker and putting another one on top of it, but completely removing and removing the beliefs you have about yourself because of what you went through when you were in that state. And then removing the survivor label and, and putting a thriver one on. And it's not just piling all these labels on top of one another like this. And then just hoping that, that you see, read, and believe the one that's on top and everyone else does too, because underneath you still feel like you're all of those other labels. That's the difference. That's the vast, incredible, powerful difference of truly transforming your mind from within. Truly changing, not just the label, but the unconscious beliefs that you have. And that transforms you energetically, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, everything in your life comes from this place of thriving, from abundance, from knowing your worth, from knowing that you're enough and never, ever, ever wavering from that. Just that is what gets embedded in the core and the root of who you are. And that is a beautiful transformation. And when you get to go through, when you ready, when you are ready, when you decide to get out of the survivor and move into the thriver. And it's not just putting another label on. It's not just masking it. It's true transformation from the inside out that changes everything about your life. All of your relationships, all of your interactions, all of your engagements, the way that you see life exponentially changes and is vastly different when you get out of the survivor stage and move into the thriver stage. And that's exactly what transforming past pain to present power does and allows you to go through. I would love, love, love for you. If you're out of the victim stage and now in the survivor stage, first of all, to honor yourself because it took fear, faith, strength, and courage to do just that but to not stop there, to take it one step further, to complete the evolution, to get completely away from that. And there's no faster, greater, and better way than using the power of your unconscious mind to do just that. I would love, love, love to answer any questions that you have or to see you inside of our program when you're ready for this journey. You can find links in the description below this video help you learn more. All right, you guys, that is it for now. Much love to all of you. Mwah.